Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. And each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end. From the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we are only going to be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I want to thank you for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. If you want to support this channel for only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all of this channel content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. With that, let's jump into another epic story. 39 days, 18 people, one survivor. Twyla Tanner, a 41-year-old highway repair worker from Missouri, was the runner-up on Survivor's ninth season, Survivor Vanuatu. By the time she finished playing, Survivor had seen a woman who didn't take no crap from anyone and played a brutal cutthroat game, surprisingly, but also has a soft spot once you get to know her. So how does someone like this fare in a game of social strategy? Let's find out. Survivor Vanuatu opens up in a very unique way as Jeff tells the players that they are about to take place in a local ritual and that the they need to remember that this is not their homeland and they need to be respectful of what is about to happen. The ceremony you're going to take part in is an authentic Vanuatu tribal tradition. You are in a foreign country. Remember that. This is their culture. We are only visitors. After the opening ceremony, the men and women are officially split into two separate tribes, and this is not what Twyla wants at all, since she is rough and tough, and, and really, she gets along best with men. When I found out we were splitting the men into women, I looked around at them little girls, and I thought, oh, Lord, what'd you get me into? <laughs> On the long walk to find their camp, some of the women just want to sit and rest for the night after all it's dark, and they're walking, and they don't really know where they're going. But that isn't Twyla's MO. She is a hard Worker, and when her mind is set on a task, she is committed to following through with it. No quitting. Are you not able to sleep in this rain cold? No, no, I want to keep walking. Keep walking. walking. Stay. They do eventually find camp that night, and the next day sees about mm, half the women's camp hard at work on building their shelter. Twyla is one of the women building, and Eliza thinks that Twyla works too hard. In fact, she thinks that Twyla's hard work ethic is making everyone else look bad in comparison, and it makes the younger women feel isolated, and Eliza of feeling judged by Twyla. Twyla has been working on the shelter constantly. I feel like her continuous work has made those of us who have taken reasonable breaks look bad in her mind to think that, oh, they're not pulling their weight. Don't just take Eliza's word for it though, as this is followed by Twyla basically saying exactly what Eliza did. Work needs to be done and some of the women are just sitting around and not doing enough. The hut still is not done. There's a couple of them that didn't do nothing but bitch moan and complain last night. It was all cold. You know, get off your ass, get the done, or don't bitch about it tonight when you're freezing your butt off. The women do go on to win the immunity challenge, and for now, no real strategic decision needs to be made. This first episode gives us all the basic insight into Twyla that we need to begin this epic tale. Mostly that she is a hard worker, seems to be no nonsense, and while she has the respect of the older women, the younger women feel judged by her. This is no doubt going to cause some drama in the camp. The better question is, when is the drama going to happen, not if. Episode 2 begins with a lot of the younger women, namely Dolly and Eliza, feeling down about their living conditions. After all, they have found maggots in their food after it was already cooked, and while this is a sour moment for some, Twyla doesn't care and finds this to be humorous for herself. It can't be a maggot because it's, it's, it's been boiled, huh? We just are those poured maggots? Some without yeah. Those are definitely yeah. maggots. Yeah, I'm eating it anyway. Eat them up. Mm, gosh, give them to me. If it comes down to eating maggots, I'm going to eat maggots. To me, if there was, they were cooked. They're good. Protein. Eat them. Shut 
Uh. Let me foreshadow the remainder of the season and a big flaw Twyla has in her game as it truly shows its colors here and it will pop up time and time again. Now we got a glimpse of this in the premiere, but Twyla calls the younger women a bunch of sorority girls and says that they need to go back to the Holiday Inn to be pampered. Sorority girls, like... Like scout calls them. Just they just wear me out. They just don't understand the game, I guess. If they want to be pampered, they need to go back to the holiday room. However, what is important here is that she is creating an us versus them mentality within their own tribe, and that is a surefire way to hurt her in the long run, though it may help her in the short run. Especially when it comes to working with the girls and garnering votes if any of them reaches the jury. It's kind of like Colby Donaldson in the Australian Outback, who did the same thing to his own detriment by making enemies with Jerry and Keith for no good decision discernible reason. Later on, the women hear some clucking. Could it be? Sure enough, there is a chicken in their midst and Twyla finds its nest. Now she does feel bad as she goes to stab the chicken, but she misses. Not all is lost though, as they do get some eggs out of this whole ordeal. We almost had us a chicken. I got five eggs. Oh, this is a what we kind of suspected in episode one is confirmed here by Amy when she tells us that this tribe is truly split into two between the older women who have banded together and the younger women who are kind of just hanging out. The two groups that were formed, I think, are like the older generation and then the younger generation. This sounds like it could be fine, except it's not great for Twyla since the older women are the minority group of four. It comes down to alliance wise and stuff. It's Amy and me and Scout and Leanne. When talking with Dolly, she says the five younger women wanted Twyla out before the first tribal, so it is a good thing that they want immunity since now she is viewed as very valuable to her tribe and is no longer expendable. I think Twyla knew that the five younger girls and we had said that if we had gone to tribal council for the first uh, challenge that we would have voted for her. And then now, you know, we cannot vote for Twyla. She's busting her ass. We absolutely have to have her here. And the expendable person really is Eliza. The women go on to lose the immunity challenge. And now it comes down to who are we going to vote out? And Dolly flip-flops between the older and younger group, which causes Eliza to vote with the older women since Dolly was talking about voting out Eliza. And Dolly is gone in a five to four vote. Dolly, tribe has spoken. Episode three begins and at the previous tribal council, the one where Dolly was voted out, Twyla did allude to the fact that while everyone is working, some are just working harder than others. Now Mia reads into this and takes personal offense to it as her and Twyla get into a fight back at camp that has them both calling each other not great names. You play the martyr, I don't care. We all do our around here. I didn't say everybody yes, you did. did. You called our asses out last night. I'm not gonna sit there and argue with her because she's mad. But I ain't taking her crap, I'll tell you that. I whooped a little scrawny bitch's ass because I don't care. I ain't ain't here to make no friends. Since this episode has a twist where both tribes go to tribal, this disharmony within the group is brought up as the younger women feel the ire of Twyla and point out that she hasn't tried to build any relationship with them. Being for myself, I, I haven't felt like Twyla's made any effort to um, communicate or build anything with me. Twyla then says that they haven't tried to connect with her and everyone knows that she feels more connected with men than women. You can fully see the us versus them mentality biting her in the butt here and it is all coming back on Twyla. They haven't given me an opportunity to talk to them. I mean, why would I want to walk up to somebody that rolls their eyes at me all the time and act like they can't stand to be around me? Why would I even want to try it? While Twyla goes on to rail the younger women saying how they don't connect with her because they don't try, Amy points out that this swings both ways. Twyla isn't trying to connect with them. And this hurts even worse since Twyla says she doesn't want them to judge her without knowing her but Amy says, once again, ditto Twyla, you're doing the same thing. Can you walk in somebody else's shoes? Don't, don't judge. Have you taken the time to walk in these girls' shoes and realize they're just girls? They like to play on the beach. They like to do girly stuff. By the end of Amy's speech, Twyla sees the error of her ways and finds herself giggling and smiling, which is a new side of her we haven't really seen outside of that time she ate maggots. Right now is your opportunity to like find the feminine side of you and just let go of this is what I am and realize there's so much more to you than just that. There is a wonderful Maybe I don't feminine. have a feminine in them side to yes, me. I don't do. know. All that said, Mia is still voted out five to three. Mia, tribe has spoken. Episode four is super quiet for Twyla and nothing of real significance happens for her story. So we move on to episode five where a literal earthquake happens. Holy. 
But then ironically, a metaphorical earthquake happens when the tribes get swapped up and Twyla ends up on La Pevy, which consists of five guys and two girls. And the only other girl that's on the tribe with her is Julie. However, La Pevy is stacked as they win reward. And while the situation does seem dire strategically, this is actually great for Twyla as she bonds with the men right away, namely Chris and Sarge. <laughs> I love my other tribe. Am I gonna miss them? Oh, hell yes. But yet, I fit in better with these guys up here. I'm already kicking with these guys where I was never able to kick with the girls. And when I say stacked, I do mean stacked as this tribe goes on to win immunity pretty easily. So we move on to episode six where Sarge loves having Julie and Twyla around for more reasons than you might think, including that he would like to put a dress on Twyla and take her out to dinner. Hello. My new tribe is awesome. It's a blessing to have women around. I would take Twyla as a best friend for the next 20 years over any of the women in Yasser. I also would put a dress on Twyla and go out to dinner with her because she is a lady. This love for Twyla does seem to be universal amongst the men and that is great for her, but she knows that this doesn't mean that she is safe. In fact, she knows not to trust anyone. Being the only two women over here and four men, we're all out. We're both vulnerable, we know it. You know, they could be blowing smoke up her ass just like they're blowing smoke up my ass. You know, I don't know. LaPevy goes on to win reward, which was a challenge that consisted of catching pigs in a bunch of mud, Twyla's specialty. And back at camp, she makes fun of her old tribe and Yasser for just sucking so, so hard. Hey, kick some ass. I just love it. Hey, oh, yeah. pretty ass girls. Are yeah. gonna <laughs> However, she doesn't understand why Yasser didn't vote out Eliza over Bubba. It's almost as if she doesn't understand why the women would stick together and vote out the men. To be fair, she isn't seeing Amy go full on Boston Rob on all the men on uh, the Yasser tribe. On the unintentional positive side of things though, Twyla is making LePevy think that she is all in with them since she wants a woman gone and just made fun of Yasser. I don't understand the way of thinking. If I was over there, I thought they screwed up. Why would you keep somebody like Eliza and not keep your muzzle? I don't understand that. We then hear some of the ramifications of this when Sarge says he trusts Twyla more than he trusts John. And so I went ahead and gave her my word and I said, Twyla, you got my word as a man. You are in the four to the end, no matter what. We didn't want to take John. We don't trust John. No, I don't trust John. So we needed someone that was a little bit more mature that knows what it means to give you words. I do. Now we don't see how this would all play out at Tribal since LaPevy once again wins immunity and is now on a four win streak. Episode seven sees a downward turn though as LaPevy breaks that streak and loses reward. And then Julie, who is not feeling super secure, talks to Twyla privately and basically tricks her into revealing that Twyla has made a final four deal with Chris, Sarge, and Chad. It makes Twyla think that actually those men offered Julie the same deal, which they didn't, but Twyla doesn't know that. So what are you thinking about final four? Have they been promising you that? They've approached you to be one of the final four. Have they done it to you? Sarge told me that Chris and I and Sarge and Chad would be the final four. They turned around and they told Julie the same exact thing. LaPevy goes on to lose immunity and going into tribal council, John finds Twyla to be pretty loyal, which I think is part of her social charm that she has with these men. And it comes across really well with how blunt she is and her great work ethic, which is funny as uh, she's actually playing John like a fiddle. It'd be for us four yeah, against us four. Chad. I take Twyla's word because yeah, she is a rough redneck. And right. to me, all rough rednecks that I have met are pretty loyal. At tribal council, John says, hey, I love taking naps and Twyla works way too hard. I wish she would take some naps as well. It would make me feel better about myself. This seems to be a consistent thought amongst all the younger people in this game. As far as do better, I would love to see her take naps. <laughs> I, would, I would love it. I would not feel as stressed around camp if I saw Twyla say, hey, let's kick back and take a nap. Because I'm the number one napper going. going. I mean, I like taking naps and, and I never see her take little cat naps, ever. John is then voted out unanimously. John. Tribe is spoken. Episode 8 begins and Twyla is topless. No joke. Her and Julie are sunbathing on the beach and they convince Sarge to do this as well, which works for him since he says he once went to Europe, so it's fine. Julie is an exhibitionist. I mean, she's comfortable with it. And I told him I'm comfortable with it because I've been in Europe. And when Chad and Chris catch him doing this with them, hilarity ensues. Sarge! <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Julie is a bad! Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Before the reward challenge happens, Scout is happy to see Twyla. In fact, a bit too happy in a way that makes her look bad strategically in front of the guys. I'm just so happy to see Twyla. I had a dream last night that Twyla had to go home and she was crying and I was crying and... Woo! Scout made a few comments last night at this game that she just kept on and on about me and I'm going, oh, Scout, shut up, you know, because I need these guys to believe that I'm wholeheartedly on their side and here she's going on about how she missed and how she said a prayer for me and she was so glad to see me and yada, 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 yada. And yeah, yeah, them guys would be stupid if they didn't read something into that. Lepevi does win reward, and thankfully the men still think that Twyla is locked in with them, so Scout doesn't cause any immediate damage to her strategic game. That is a dodged bullet. Yeah. And with Twyla, she's too stubborn to go with those women. Yeah, it's not all. Nah. And then at the immunity challenge, it finally happens. Uh-oh. Drop the bus. Woo! You are now one tribe. Woo! What's up? What's up, guys? That's right they're merged. And at the merge feast, we once again hear how much Scout missed Twyla, and this must be an important thing for Twyla since it has now been shown to us in this episode three separate times. I just miss Twyla deep down in places I can't talk about. It's just a happy moment, you know? So now a big decision has to be made. Does Twyla stay with the guys and vote out Amy, or does she flip back to the women and vote out their target, Rory? As it turns out, Twyla and Julie want Rory gone first. Talking about having Rory go like Roy. Are you still staying with Lepevi? Yes, yeah. but we want to take Roy out first and then Amy seven. Which of course has her final four alliance with the men going, oh no, we don't want that. But they aren't 100% on Twyla having screwed them yet. And Chris just simply says that Twyla is so paranoid, you basically have to strategize for her. But nonetheless, Sarge and Chris have faith in Twyla. She even tells them to their face that she will vote whichever way they want to. However, Amy then tells us that she doesn't think Twyla ever left the Women's Alliance. She thinks she just had to do whatever she needed to at La Pevy to survive. Everyone thinks Twyla is with them, so she is bound to screw over someone here. Right now, with Twyla and Julie, I feel confident about about the way they talk. They talk with a lot of faith, a lot of character. I don't think that Twyla and Julie ever left the Women's Alliance. They had to do what they had to do to survive with all men. That someone is indeed the men, as Rory goes home in a six to four vote. Rory, the tribe has spoken. Episode 9 begins and the men are floored. They now realize the gender split is real and the pagonging of the men is on. So this is men against women. It's the first time I realized that. I've never had anyone waver in my alliance and tonight was the first time that the alliance wasn't true. We then learn from Twyla that the reason she realigned with the women is because Julie told her about that final four deal they made with her, which as we know is not real, but Twyla still doesn't know that. Even though Sarge gave me his word, and Chris gave me his word, and, and Chad gave me his word. I felt like I still couldn't trust the guys. The guys had told me that I was going to be part of the final four, and they told you the same thing. Predictably, the men feel hurt by Twyla's betrayal, especially Sarge and Chris, who she had really good connections with on La Pevy. I just real hurt just the way because I thought Twyla was sincere. I, I just I guess I don't understand their reasoning. Yeah. It must it's well, just, just like the it must guy. just be gender. It must be a woman thing. Julie and Leanne win reward and upon returning back they bring chicken wings to camp. Very nice. However, the men are all out at sea, so the women get together and decide we're gonna eat all these chicken wings and not tell the guys. Don't waste a drop, dude. Eat the fat, eat the Everything but the bone. Yeah, isn't it yummy though? When the men return, the women lie by acting like, oh, you're just now coming back from your reward? Oh, what is this? Chicken bones? How very nice of you. We definitely didn't eat chicken wings earlier. No oh, kidding? You brought back chicken yeah, bones? Yeah, oh my oh, God. Take a look at real meat. Bro. I see my bone. I oh, see. Look, look. Oh, I see that's my that's bone. The average American would be like, oh my God, that is the lowest form of insult I could ever imagine. But to the Lenten tribe, it was like Christmas. All of a sudden, a pig is at tree mail and Twyla and Sarge are hungry, real hungry, for some bacon. You can't eat them, don't, you both have machetes, good stuff. Come on, Wait, Sarge. Listen, listen, listen. We love bacon, we don't care about the damn pig.
leading up to tribal council, Sarge and Twyla have an honest talk about what exactly happened with the Rory vote. Twyla tells him, hey, I know you guys made a deal with Julie, so you're just trying to screw me over. And he says, actually, no, there was never any deal with Julie. You were definitely number four in my alliance. He says, Twyla, you were the only woman I offered this final four deal to. And then they realized that, uh, oh, there was miscommunication and Julie tricked her. Let's go Rory, then you, then Chad, Chris, and me. But I'd have been a four Oh, you were four, like so solid. Like my whole life depended on it. We then hear what is Twyla's true philosophy when playing the game of Survivor. Every move she makes when it comes to alliances and voting is to get her further ahead and not based on personal feelings towards someone, which is actually a great way to play as it has proven the most successful in the show's history. I'm willing to play wherever, however I have to play this game to get ahead, I'm gonna play it. At Tribal Council, Twyla says something she has actually said multiple times a season, but for some reason here, it gets the biggest reaction when she says everyone knows how she feels much more at ease with the men. And I think the women know. I feel more at ease over here with the men than I ever did with the, with the women. You know, I'm not gonna lie about that. Regardless of that, Sarge is still voted out and the pagonging of the men continues. Sarge, the tribe has spoken. Episode 10 sees a reward where half of the tribe wins it and Twyla is not part of that half. With Eliza gone on that reward, everyone talks about booting Eliza. Finally, it just kicks into overdrive. Everyone says that they basically just need to clear it with Amy and it's a done deal, just like that. Except Scout says, forget Amy. We don't need her. We can just loop the guys in and make this happen. The guys don't even know. Oh, but that's the, here's their, the guys will vote with us because here's their choice. Don't vote with us and one of you guys are going home tonight. Liza or one of you, take your pick. But Scout really underestimates how much power Amy has with these women when later on the women are like, mm, we probably should still clear it with Amy. So they talk to her and she shuts down the notion of even eliminating Liza before all of the men are gone. It just scares me to think that one of the girls would be going home before the guys. Scout and I were definitely at odds about how the vote should go. She really wants to get rid of Eliza, but I thought getting rid of Eliza tonight was not a good idea at all. At the immunity challenge, it requires them hanging on a pole for as long as you can, and through sheer will and determination, Twyla wins this challenge over Chad. Go down, Chad, go down, Chad. Please, God, go down, Chad. Chad is out. Twyla Ow! wins immunity. Chad is now scrambling as it is clear it's either him or Chris going home next. He tries to talk to Twyla about this and is like, who's going next? Is it me or Chris? And she smartly plays dumb and pins the responsibility of this decision on Amy. It's doing the same thing to me, right? Has everything changed? What? I have no idea what's going on. Are you kidding me? No, ma'am, sir. Amy's not stupid and she sees something's coming. Twyla then talks to Scout and says, hey, what are we gonna do? Amy is anti-voting Eliza out with two men still left in the game and Scout still wants Eliza gone, but Twyla points out that if they vote for Eliza with these men, they have a 4-4 tie on their hands and Twyla is unwilling to draw rocks. It's not gonna happen though. They're not gonna do it. And somebody's gonna have to draw a rock tonight and go home. Would you like to be out of this game by a freaking stone? Well, I would. But don't take Twyla's unwillingness to draw rocks to mean she doesn't want to flip. If anything, she wants to knock the queen down. She just doesn't have the numbers to do so. Yet. You know, I'd really, yes, I'm like Scout. Yes, I'd like the hands to be turned and Amy not be in charge right now. At Tribal Council, Twyla says you can't trust any of these people in the game 100%. After all, they are just strangers you only gotten to know through the context of a social strategic game for a million dollars. Amy says Twyla is wrong. When it comes right down to it, you can't trust anybody. I'm going to be 99.9%, .9%, but I don't know. That is such bull. I don't question that one bit. Like, I definitely know that there are people I can trust, and I know I can be trusted. And we'll find out if you're sitting totally. in the final two, whether you're right or whether you're totally. wrong. Chad is then voted out six to two. Chad, tribe spoken. Episode 11 begins with Chris telling the women that Scout and Twyla wanted to band with the men and vote out Eliza and then Amy. From what we have seen, this is pretty much the truth, but whether it is true or not, it plants the seeds of doubt in the other women's heads about Twyla. Scout and Twyla come to me and Chad, wanting to form an alliance with us. I swear to God on my family's lives. Leanne takes this information she learned from Chris and confronts Twyla about it and is like, hey, is this true? And Twyla confirms it is true by saying Scout came up with the idea, which is then later confirmed by Scout, who blames Chad. But why would Chad be at fault for Twyla and Scout choosing to flip? So I told Twyla that I heard some things that I'm not very comfortable with and we need to talk about it. Yeah. 
is the most what he did. She did. Not me. She just completely confirmed the story. At the reward challenge, it is the family visit, but before they see their family members, they get to video chat with them. Survivor is trying to trick everyone that the family members weren't really on Vanuatu when they really were. Here's your son, James. Oh my God. Oh my God. Leanne and Amy then confront Twyla again over the fact that the men approached Twyla and she says, hey, I was just listening to them, which is obviously the right move to do when someone comes and talks to you. However, Leanne and Amy say, you shouldn't have done that. They so were good. trying to work me like crazy. But why didn't you but just what? them down? Why, why don't you say, absolutely not. There's no way in hell. Go run on back to your why little do you buddies. Have to and them? Why do you have to go to Why do you have to even listen to two words? Now, what they're really encouraging is, of course, bad gameplay that favors them. And Twyla swears on her son that she is with Amy and Leanne. Remember that because it's going to come up again. I swore to Amy and Leanne on my son's name that I was with them 100%. Amy wins individual immunity, so back at camp, surprisingly, the women all agree to vote out Eliza and not Chris. It does seem like a very half-hearted commitment, though. All right, we made our decision. All right. All right. But as it turns out, Eliza is a key cog in Twyla and Scout's plan to flip on Amy as Twyla convinces Chris that if he can flip Eliza, then this can flip the game for them. They would have an obvious four to three advantage and this would be huge, knocking Amy off of her high horse. She says she is tired of Amy acting high and mighty, thinking she has this game in hand, kind of like uh, John Carroll, which is awesome for her, but she is backing out of swearing on her son in the same exact episode that she just got done doing it. Think about it. For the last three days, you felt the key. You had it in your life. I swore on my son's name. May God forgive me for saying that, because it, it's not the right thing to do, but it's time for something to change. Chris, of course, loves this idea. Why wouldn't he? This is going to stop a bagonging. And then he talks to Eliza, who's very reluctant, but she does agree. And the flip is successful as Amy's right hand woman, Leanne, is voted out four to three. Leanne, Travis Spoken. Back at camp in episode 12, Amy is super PO'd and for good reason considering how big this blindside blows up her entire game, she had it in hand. Her and Twyla then get into a fight where Twyla says she made the move for the little guy and Amy just lays it on thick about Twyla swearing on her son and paints her in a very bad light. Well, I can say that that was a really nice move. I just felt like we was gonna get all screwed over, so I felt like I'd take up for the little guy. Take up for the little guy, that's right. cute. cute. Screwed you, didn't I? Put Twyla put herself down. But I you don't have to, you my sit around and party for Kato. I'm disappointed in Twyla promising on her son's life just kind of disgusts me. After Amy's blow up, everything kind of cools down. Twyla reminds us that she did this flip to overthrow the queen, and in a way, she is right. Overthrown the queen and the little princess. People like that just piss me off because they think they're so much better than every freaking buddy else. Eliza, Amy, and Chris get to go on an overnight reward at a resort, and while there, Twyla tells Scout that Amy will be smooth talking Eliza, and that she doesn't think Eliza is fully committed to them, and that she could be swayed by Amy. However, when Chris talks to Eliza after hearing Amy out, he says, of course, we want to go to the end with Twyla. Why wouldn't we want to go to the end with Twyla? She's an easy person to beat, which sounds bad, but hey, if someone wants to take you to the final two, that's good. Final four. And look at our competition. I know. A 16 year old woman. Twyla. Eliza has been hanging out non-stop with Julie and Amy since Leanne went home and before tribal council, Eliza knows that Twyla is nervous since Eliza never hangs out with her, but Eliza says straight up, Twyla's just not fun to be around. Oh my god, Eliza's been off with them all day. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm like, I just like spending time with them. Right. They're just Does more fun than you, you are. At Tribal Council, Amy is brutal against Twyla, even getting to the point where she says that Twyla is written out of her life very harsh. I think when somebody flat out just disgustingly lies to you and says things to you that I really can't imagine, that person to me is just written out of my life. I don't have any part of that. Twyla tries to defend herself by saying Amy needs to grow up and get over it, which is not a great tactic to smooth things out. Even Eliza agrees swearing on her son is bad. I did swear on my son's name and I do ask forgiveness, for, but I am not the only freaking person that has lied in this game. Get over it. Grow up, get on with it. You've been had. Screw you. When voting for Amy, Twyla calls her a drama queen to the end. Drama queen to the end. Amy is then successfully voted out four to two. Amy, the tribe has spoken. 
Episode 13 starts with Twyla being upset. Clearly the guilt is eating at her about swearing on her son and people constantly bringing up just makes it worse. I'm tired of hearing about it, period. The only one that I've got to condole with or say anything to is my son when I get home. The rest of you mother can kiss my... Julie says she is definitely going to be using this against Twyla, and uh, Chris recognizes that this is a dumb thing to do to someone in your own alliance, meaning the way Twyla is treating Eliza. I knew that it wasn't a good thing what Twyla was doing. She definitely offended Eliza. Eliza being part of this four-person alliance with Scout, Twyla, and myself, you know, it's, it's important to try to keep a level you know, understanding. Julie then gets to work on flipping Eliza to vote out Twyla, and Eliza thinks to herself, you know what? Why not? Why would it be a big deal to vote Twyla off instead of me? I don't know. Later on, Eliza is hungry and wants some of the tribe's bananas. And when she asks Twyla where she buried them at, Twyla says, I ain't telling you. Twyla and Scout then go on to bully Eliza and make her feel like trash. And at this point, I think it's safe to say that she has lost Eliza's vote and is definitely solidifying Eliza flipping on her. Where are they? I am not telling you. Tea. Well, I'm gonna let the, if you ask me one more time, I'm gonna let them damn things rot in the ground. It's so patronizing that you're acting like a kid, though. Get over it. Why are you being so childish about the damn bananas? <laughs> she don't want you to have the bananas yet, honey. But Eliza and Julie is not enough for a flip to happen, especially when Chris is so committed to his final three deal with Scout and Twyla. It's not changing. I mean, don't even doubt it. I would tell you. You got it? We're going all the way. Eliza and Chris have a conversation where she talks to him about flipping with her and Julie on Twilight Scout, but here it comes. Twyla catches her having this conversation red-handed, and Eliza and her go on to have a fight. However, this does prove what Twyla said earlier about Eliza not being 100% on board with her, but to be fair, Twyla's kind of causing it. I don't know, I just feel like you're with me. You got immunity. You're right, I do have immunity tonight, but if I don't have immunity tomorrow night, then who's gone, T? I think you're a liar, T. Before Tribal Council, Twyla says once again, you really can't not trust anyone in this game. People have murdered others for less than a million dollars, which is certainly a dark way to look at things. You can't trust nobody now. Nobody. You're playing for a million dollars. People have murdered for less than a million dollars. You know, come on. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks Twyla if she thinks anyone sitting in the final five is unworthy of being there, and she essentially confirms it. Yes, there is someone, and her name is Eliza. Twyla, is there any way that somebody could be unworthy of winning? My personal opinion is yes, there is. It's me, by the way, in case anybody was wondering. Chris does pull through for her, though, and Julie is voted out three to two. Julie, the tribe has spoken. It is finale time. Chris versus Eliza versus Scout versus Twyla. And speaking of Eliza, Twyla reiterates back at camp that she does not deserve to still be in this game. Basically has a wrong idea about what Survivor is really about, while Eliza is right in her assessment. Never say that I thought that somebody who was still here didn't deserve to be here. I don't think you deserve to be here, Eliza. That's blatantly not you true. You have done nothing for the camp. You have done nothing but bull freaking water. At the final four immunity challenge, Chris wins and Twyla celebrates finally being able to vote out Eliza. Right now I just want to gloat. I want to gloat that the little winch is going home today. Tonight, I'm gloating. Chris then tries to get Twyla worked up and says, yeah, go rub it in Eliza's face that she's going to be voted out. I want to gloat, but that's just what Chris wants me to do. See, he, the more I piss everybody off right before they leave, the more easier it is if we're the final two that he gets all the votes. So, you know, I see what he's doing. It is time to vote, and Eliza writes down Twyla's name and calls her a cockroach. Twyla, I am voting for you for the third time this game. You're like the cockroach that won't die under the refrigerator. Hopefully, you're going home tonight. Eliza is then voted out three to one. Eliza, trap spoken. At this point, Twyla is guaranteed final two. Whether she wins immunity, Chris wins immunity, or Scout wins immunity, she's going to the end. Both Chris and Scout want to take her, so she is just in a golden spot here. So when it is time for the final three immunity challenge, where the castaways have to stand on a perch while making sure an arrow doesn't pierce their bow's target paper, Twyla doesn't step down for Chris despite his pleas and his bargains. Honestly, it would be out of character for her to do so. You know the outcome, Twyla. And the deal making begins. 
good as gold, Twyla. Hey, Twyla, I've proved to you two times in a row, man. You're the one that turned your back on me at La Peve. I might fall off this thing or ram this thing through my ass, but I sure in hell ain't gonna step down off this pole. Chris wins the final immunity challenge, and while he suspected that Twyla and Scout had a secret arrangement, it turns out they did not. So at Tribal Council, he votes out Scout and brings Twyla with him to the final two. Scout, the tribe has spoken. Back at camp, Chris once again tries to talk up Twyla and says he ain't taking any crap at Final Tribal Council and she should have neither. Then as the two are hanging out, they sit on the hammock together and something very peculiar happens here. And right before Final Tribal Council, Twyla sweetly reflects on her time in the game and how much it really means to her. The memories, being by the ocean and seeing things and doing things I've never seen and done before, it's been, it's been an amazing adventure. Chris, Twyla, welcome to your final tribal council. It is time, final tribal council. Chris and Twyla both have to answer to the jury about the actions they took in this game and hopefully have the jury's respect for what they have done, especially Twyla who made quite a few flips. In Twyla's opening speech, she starts pretty decently by being calm and explaining how she played without attacking anyone or getting defensive. I played it hard, I know why. Didn't do everything that I should have done and should have done more in some other incidents, but I, it came from my soul. Everything I did was to win this main nose, and that's why I believe I should be the sole survivor not. That calm demeanor doesn't last too long, though, as Eliza is the first juror, and she calls Twyla a B and wants her to apologize. Twyla does not apologize and instead fights with her. This is going south pretty quickly, and Twyla is clearly not trying to get her vote. You never treated me with an ounce of respect. You didn't even speak to me like I deserved your breath. That I didn't deserve to be here. I was a spoiled brat. But I told, um, did I not tell that you I, that to your face? And I did tell you why I felt. Wait, is this is this an apology? Is this? I, I mean, if you don't feel that you that I deserve an apology, then I'm fine. just getting to fine. the point. You feel that I'm a lying, deceptive bitch. Well, I think you're a spoiled, rotten little child. Julie is the second juror, and Twyla never has a chance with her as she only wants to talk with Chris, and he sweet talks her so hard that she cries, and it is a uh, very emotional. Leanne is the third juror, and once again, she brings up Twyla swearing on her son. She trusted Leanne and is sorry, but Leanne doesn't look like she really cares. I am sorry for that because I did trust you, and that's why I did what I did, Leanne not out of disrespect for you. Amy is fourth, and the dead horse of swearing on Twyla's son is not done, as she is confused why Twyla would do that one lie, but then has to be bluntly honest about everything else. Twyla takes the opportunity to apologize for swearing on her son's name. Well, I wanna start out, if you don't mind, by apologizing to you and Leanne for swearing on my son's name. I should have never brought him into it. I should have never done that. Chad is the fifth juror, and he asked Twyla what she has learned in this game. Twyla says that she has learned some life lessons, such as not being so quick to judge others and to watch what she says more closely. Despite this good answer, I don't think she ever had a chance to gain Chad's vote, but I do think she is sincere with what she has learned. I need to watch what I say and how I come across to people. Maybe I need to ease up, back off. I'm a little hard and quick to judge sometimes and I, that's not a good thing. Now to be clear, so far Twyla isn't doing great. I mean, she isn't doing terrible, but she's not doing that great. However, I do think that this is a perfect time to show what Chris is doing to every single juror, as we briefly teased with Julie earlier, as he is basically BSing so hard to suck up to all of them, and Twyla isn't doing this at all, but it seems to be working for Chris. And I look at the seven people on the jury, everybody sitting over there possesses a genuine quality that they looked past the million dollars, and it, it's something I didn't do. It's something I'll take with me to try to become a better person. Sarge is the sixth juror to speak, and frankly, he's a bit confusing, as he says Twyla has a 99% chance of getting his vote, but this seems to be untrue based on everything that takes place after him saying that, since he lambasts her and asks, was it really worth swearing on your son? She says no. You need the million dollars, and I'm 99% sure right now you're probably gonna get my vote. Of course it really helps us to know that Sarge was lying as he says psych when voting. Good one Sarge, good one. Psych. 
I had to know where our friendship stood. Scout is the last juror and probably the only locked vote Twyla has since uh, they have been in an alliance since the beginning and we remember how Scout missed her very deeply. Scout also says that she doesn't like how Chris is BSing everyone while Twyla is being her authentic self. Twyla, to your credit, you're not able to bully very much, but I value the integrity of your ability to still speak your truth even though it trips you up and gets you in trouble sometimes. You can't not be Twyla. Twyla's closing speech has her being honest about how selfish she was all game and you can see the hurt she feels for what she has done, namely swearing on her son, and she even cries a little bit. As Scout said, this is authentically Twyla. You don't have to rub it in. You don't have to make me feel any lower than what I already feel for doing what I did. You don't understand how that's bothered me. I apologize to each and every one of you. It wasn't the game I intended to play, it was the game that ended up playing me. However, despite all of this, Chris wins five to two. Chris. Chris. Twyla. Twyla. Chris, the winner of Survivor Vanuatu. So let's break this down. How is Twyla as a character? One of a kind. I can't think of any tough old broads in the first eight seasons of the show quite like Twyla. The closest comparison I can think of is Sandra since she would also tell people off, but that comparison isn't as close here as I would like to think. Twyla is tough and wants to be perceived that way, but if you can crack her hard exterior, she has a heart of gold. You see this with her son, the way Amy broke her down at Tribal in the pre-merge and at Final Tribal when she truly apologized to everyone and cried. Swearing on her son tore her up inside and her lashing out at people was to try and stop them from laying on more guilt than what she was already feeling. Her no-nonsense attitude combined with her moments of fun makes her a one-of-a-kind character and a truly great part of Survivor Vanuatu. Out of 38 character moments shown on the show, 18 were heroic and 20 were villainous, making Twyla Tanner a villain character on Survivor Vanuatu. Now how is Twyla as a strategist? Well, she reached the end and it was largely due to the moves she made in the game kudos to her that is the good side of the coin she was not afraid to make moves and cut throats when needed however she also unnecessarily po'd a lot of people along the way and she would have been cut at final four if chris didn't think she was a massive goat to bring to the end once the flip happens aunt leanne is voted out i'm not sure who twilight could have beat at the end except maybe eliza but even that's not guaranteed she played us all a game but really cannibalized herself every step of the way out of winning it all out of 59 strategic moments shown on the show 36 were smart and 23 were dumb, making Twyla Tanner a smart strategist on Survivor Vanuatu. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all of this possible, so thank you, and thank you for watching.